Hey guys, Peter here to do an album review and today I'm here to talk to you guys about Follow the Cypher's debut album, Follow the Cypher, out May 11th on Nuclear Blast. And listen guys, this is one of the most eclectic albums that I heard in a while. It really mixes a bunch of different genres of metal, uh, power metal, hair metal, glam rock if you will. And then if that's not enough of a mixture of different genres, they incorporate a lot of synthesizer work, almost reminiscent of bands like Alphaville and AHA from the 80s. This album really has a, a little bit of, a, of an 80s vibe to it, of an 80s feel to it. The music, the lyrics, the delivery, everything about this album is, to me, it really is reminiscent of that time period. The album has 11 tracks, it's 45 minutes, and it's an extremely easy listening experience, a fun experience. It really takes you on a ride from song 1 to song 11. They really did a good job structuring the album, placing the tracks at the right order in order to create a fluidity in life and really allow the, the listener to grow um, as he's listening to this album. Because this is an album to some people will take some listens for you to really be able to process it. Uh, because it just adds a lot of different components. So in, in each song brings something different to the table, even though there are some components that are uh, that are present from song one to song 11, each song individually is very unique in its own way. So it does create for the listener a really cool experience where you're really learning from each song as you're going along and really developing a taste for the band and a taste for the album. I, I, from those things that are constant throughout the album, uh, I have to mention three things. One is the lyrics. Uh, the whole Follow the Cypher album and band is really about uh, a world after a huge apocalypse, uh, a world of, of war and battle, so a lot of the lyrics are representative of that. Even the one at the end, which is song number 11, Corollas Rex, which is obviously a cover from Sabaton, even that song has a little bit of, of a war in history uh, feel to it. So even that song even belongs in this album and really feels like it fits in with the rest of the album. So that to me is a constant. You're really going to get that sort of lyric from song 1 to song 11. It's all going to have the same motif, if you will. Another constant to me, uh, more on the negative side, is the synthesizer work. I really felt that they used a little bit too much of it, but not just too much of it. Some of the melodies were very similar. I'll give you guys an example. Valkyria and Starlight are two different songs that have a very similar uh, synthesizer intro to it. Very similar. Not the same, but very similar. So I think perhaps they used it a little bit too much. I, I overall enjoyed it. Uh, I really... It added a lot of melody, that's for sure. It added a, a lot of melody. It, it added a lot of that 80s vibe. But I think they went a little bit overboard. I, I think it could have been toned down a little bit, or at least the melodies could have been slightly different so that it wouldn't give the songs a little bit of a, of a repetitive vibe to it. The other aspect that it was a constant throughout the album is Linda's vocals. Her vocals are absolutely phenomenal. She has the ability of having such an angelic voice and at the same time the raspiness in her voice adds a lot of darkness and despair uh, to the lyrics and to the song. So she's able with, to really use her voice as an instrument in order to really bring light and happiness to a song and at the same time be able to use that in that same song sometimes use that voice to bring darkness and agony to a song really really incredible vocals to me one of the highlights of the album her vocal delivery by far one of one of the highlights uh, another thing i would like to mention because it is it's not necessarily a concept that does happen in a few songs but not throughout the whole album and that's the use uh, of male vocals uh in some key songs so they used it and a song like Valkyria is used throughout the song, even some harsh vocals. And I really liked it, uh, how they used it, because they used it sporadic and they use it in certain key moments. In some songs, they use it in the chorus. And by using that backup male vocals in the chorus, it really gave thickness and heaviness to the chorus of the song and really allowed Linda's voice with having that that heaviness and darkness behind it it really allowed her voice to really come out more angelic and, and it really allowed it for the song to gain heaviness in life uh without having to be super heavy but adding that really added thickness i think is the best word to describe it because it really made the the chorus of the song a lot more compact so the use of the male vocals in, in several of the songs of the album to me was was a genius idea because it also added a little bit of a contrast to her her vocals, it was almost like the yin and the yang. So I really like what they did there. Um, the last two songs of the album are two songs that I have to mention, not on my top three, but are two songs that I have to mention. 
because the last song is Sabaton's Carolus Rex cover and I have to say that one of my favorite covers I really enjoy that song and I'm really glad that they incorporated that song in the album and song number 10 Star Ch Starlight is uh, a song that's full of cameos just full of in including Joaquin from Sabaton he's also in um, he's also in that uh, in that song and also the leads the former lead singer from uh, Civil War is in that song as well so this is a song that perhaps one of the heavier songs of the album, but also due to a lot of the male vocals that they use, they use, I think, five different vocalists in that song, at least, that I could that I, I could think of. Uh, and they use Linda's voice in that song just in the chorus. So that is, to me, is a much different song than what you're gonna get from the, from the rest of the album. A, a little bit heavier, really cool song, really cool dynamic. Two amazing guitar solos in that song. One of those that Perhaps at first glance, it doesn't fit with the rest of the album because it's very different from what you're going to get from song one to song nine. But once you listen to the whole album, it really makes sense why they put that song where they did towards the end. And it really complements the album well. I think the best way to describe that song in Carolus Rex is how they complement this album really well. And it really gives the listener a little bit of a treat, if you will. Something that you would be not expecting from a band like Follow the Cypher, including those two songs, really gave the album a little bit of extra at the end. I really like it. Now, as far as my favorite songs, I have to mention Valkyria. It's one of my favorite songs. It's more of a power metal song. Um, it, it's, a, it's a great song. It's, it's, it has that male vocals in it, uh, even some harsh vocals in it. And I really feel the dynamic between the male vocals and Linda's vocals in that song is really what gives life to that song. Such a fast pace, such a cool song, cool guitar riffs. Uh, synthesizer work in it there right at the beginning and that's your intro so it's a song that's full of life full of energy full of happiness full of fun you know and, and, and having the dynamic between Linda and the male singer those two voices there really give the song a little bit of extra it really gives heaviness where, where heaviness perhaps would be lacking because the song is so melodic that it needed something to give it a little bit of more heaviness to, to counterbalance the 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 tons of melody that that song has. So the, the harsh vocals in some spots and the mill the mill vocals in some spots really gave that song a counterbalance to how melodic that song really is and I really enjoyed it. Another song I have to mention is My Soldier. And My Soldier is the third song on the album. Valkyrie is the second song. Valkyrie's outro becomes the, My Soldier's intro. Those two songs are interconnected. And I really like My Soldier. It's more of a rock ballad, metal ballad, if you will. Absolutely phenomenal song. I think this is one of those songs where Linda's vocals really comes in full essence. It's it's a song where she's able to really use her voice in the same song to create light and beauty and to create darkness and despair. With her voice, that, that little bit of raspiness into it really gives that darkness and despair that that song needs for such a beautiful ballad at, at some key points. And then her, her, her voice throughout the song is just absolutely angelic. This is one of those songs that the male vocals in the chorus really adds extra thickness to it. It really adds volume to the song. It really adds a little bit of heaviness because the song is not heavy at all. So those vocals really add, it, it, the song really needed something in that chorus for that chorus to be even more memorable. And that, that male vocal in the chorus really adds that thickness that you really need, that heaviness that you really need. I just have to say one thing about this song. I love this song, but I think this was an opportunity missed. This is a perfect song to be a duet. This song, and, and, and that was I was reminded of that during that chorus because that dynamic between the two vocals in the chorus really made me believe that this was a song that would have been perfect to been, been to have been a duet. It would have really been one one of those extra memorable songs if they had created this song as a duet. And I really feel that it had all the right components, all the right pieces to be an incredible duet. And I, like I said, I was reminded of that during the chorus because you really have that dynamic between the female and male vocals in the chorus. Last but not least, I Revive is one of my favorite songs as well. And I really feel like these three songs I'm giving you are really a microcosms of what the whole album has to offer. Because I Revive is more of a 80s glam metal, hair metal song, is more melodic, but it's not just melodic, it has some heavier parts to it. So it really alternates the more melodic aspects of, of the 80s glam rock era with a little bit more heaviness from the 80s heavy metal era. So it's a song that really combines those two worlds really well 
um, and it really gives you a song with a really cool dynamic. It gives you a lot of melody, but then the guitar heaviness at some key points really adds a different layer to it, and it really creates a different dynamic. Uh, I also have to mention the guitar solo in this song is also absolutely incredible. The guitar work throughout is, is really amazing, is really well done, but how the, the guitar solo in this song is not one of those solos that just goes over the top and, and the guitar player is just really showcasing how good he is. The solo in this song is an extension of the melody throughout the song. It carries on to the solo and the solo then carries it on to the next part of the song. So I really like the way this solo was placed in this song and how the solo was delivered because it really added a lot of continuation to the song. It didn't feel like the solo broke the song. It really, In other ways, it felt like the solo was more of a bridge between two parts of one song. I really like it. Overall, I really like this album. Like I said, my only really negative is perhaps too much too much synthesizer in it. But besides that, I think this is an incredible debut album by a band that's going to have a bright future ahead of them. Really talented bunch. Uh, and I think this album perhaps also, also opens the door for them to try other things, try uh, perhaps a duet in the future. I really think this band, their sound, her vocals are really calling for a duet. To me, this band is really going places. This album was really fun, really exciting to listen to. It was really enjoyable. I, I absolutely had a blast listening to this album, and I think everybody will. Especially if you if you grew up in, in the 80s like I did. I think a lot of this album uh, has a lot of that, and it's drenched in a lot of, of 80s um, charisma and vibe, uh, musically and even lyrically. So I really think a lot of people are going to enjoy this album. But now I want to hear from you guys. What do you guys think of Follow the Cypher's debut album, Follow the Cypher? Let me know in the comment section below your thoughts on the album, on Linda's vocals, Ken's guitar playing, anything that you want to talk about this album. Please use the comment section below. Let me know your thoughts. I'll be reading them and commenting back because uh, I'm really dying to hear what you guys have to say about this album. Take care, guys.